I want to go back to why you ain't got no front teeth. Who knocked out Craig? Mark's my cousin. Teeth? My cousin brother. We were playing hide and go seek in 1959 on San Pedro in 83rd, where we lived when my little brother was born. And the base was the front door. And you had to run up four steps to get to, to the base, the front door. And it's, just, it's about that high. And it didn't have no railing around it. Okay, so when I ran up, and brother, my cousin, we run up at the same time, and he's bigger than me at that time, older, and he hit me, bam, and I turn around and hit that ground. So this this wasn't a loss from a fist fight. No, sure, and, and I and it cracked right in half, and my mother had to take me, and it was I, I went for a while with a cracked tooth. Okay, now I know Moon said Buzzer did that. No. For the dime moves in the lows, for the six foes on spokes, Come on. for the OGs that did a dime came back around on parole, for the homegirls with the scrap game, little homies that gang bang, from Pelican Bay to YA, rearrange your mind frame. Yeah, I know what you've been through. Uh, Shit, you had to go ten to. Your mama gave birth on the turf. I know them killers you can do. This for the lost generation, broke as hell, man. Yo, lifting weights and I was on swore and start calling me Big Miz. Original stutter box. Eastside Five, who's Pablo Bishop, Mississippi Gangster Bloods. Yeah, Max, video, video, you know, this is real, 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 you know, when you're a kid and you see somebody too, you don't know that it's, you know, already out, but they would, my point was that they would fight all the time, two or three times a week sometime, and then later on that evening, be drunk or high off pills, you know, so, and the point being that it was just one of the people in the neighborhood that wasn't afraid of Craig. I mean, Craig was the homeboy. They, we'd, we'd even fight amongst ourselves but, you know, I just want to clarify that from yesterday. He didn't knock Craig's tooth out. Buzzer would come over here. Muncha, come out here. Buzzer lived across the street. And on Saturday, Muncha, come out. It's time to fight. That Negro would come over every Saturday to fight. Buzzer was crazy. I said, oh, we got to fight again? <laughs> was Buzzer the Avenue? Yeah. That was your partner. That was my buddy. This, but, is, this is before you guys started Avenues or while you guys were? We are Avenues. This is Avenue on Avenue. Yeah, yeah, but see, Buzzer like Red Devils. And I did too. But Red Devils, we called them Gorilla Peel. Because they make you act stupid, okay? And then the next day you don't remember nothing. Okay? I, I asked you about Red Devils. Are, are, are these like... The Second hours. Are these like strictly street or is this some medication you get from the pharmacy and you it, pop them? No, you get them from the pharmacy. And uh, uh, they, were, they were giving them to women to help lose weight, right? Sleeping Sleep, yeah. And, uh, and I had an old, a old girl give them to me, I ain't calling the name, give them to me to sell and we split the profit. <laughs> okay? So this pharmacy game that's going on today was going on back Oh then. God, yeah. And the Red Devils and True and all, we didn't have no, couldn't make that shit up. There was the f coming straight out the pharmacy, okay? Uh, um, so, so look, I, I don't mean to interrupt, but um, the avenues, was there a legit thing called the baby avenues or, or that's just something you guys called the younger guys? You see, you see, uh, we all had brothers. When I left and went to the PN, Teddy was 12. So if he was on the street, he could say, I'm a baby avenue. Okay? Teddy, um, Teddy, were you a baby avenue? Not really. Not really. You see, Teddy was by himself. He was a loner, a quiet guy. He didn't play with the friends. He always was by himself. Now, Buzzard had a baby brother named Moon. My name is Greg Stevens. Everybody knows me as Moon. Teddy Bear had a baby brother named uh, Bob. Uh, Donnie Boy had baby brothers named Wallace and Walt. The one called Wallace, Boo, Raymond Washington was his friend. They same age. When Boo would come, the gym was in his backyard. That was Donnie Boy's garage. Raymond would come work out with Boo. You understand? That was his little buddy. They were buddies. I didn't know Raymond. 
it was a guy named, that was a big buff guy named Boo. That was Donnie Boy's younger brother. He ran with him. Me, Kenny Carter, who was uh, Bobby Sanders, uh, Nathaniel Jackson, uh, Bleep, who was Paul Jackson's younger brother. We all kind of ran together right down on 84th Street. Uh, Baby Squab, who, who uh, did, he, he was locked up for 17 years for a bank robbery. Here he is right here on the end there. And uh, we all ran together, you know, but everybody was kind of over there, you know, and when, when there was a fight and they was around, the then they was with us. Okay, even though he lived, his daddy, or stepfather lived right next door to Teddy Bear. They got a wall there, and he got a brother named James, right, James? And I could look over the gate, hey, James, what's happening? Okay, da da da, and the old man. Old man was friendly. No, that was his real father. The, the guy's name was Raymond Washington Senior. That was the oh, dad. Oh, oh, I'm thinking it was his stepfather. Mm -mm. Okay. That's the real dad. Okay, in the blue, it's a blue and white house, my recollection back then. And he was nice. He was, let's see, remember all these black people, this was first owned property, black first owned. So they were proud of their property. And he would be in the backyard watering his grass, okay? And I'm in Teddy Bear's backyard with his dog. Bear always loved dogs. The dog back then named King. And he had dog fights on the weekend. But see, later on, ah, I can't talk about Bear. That. That's a whole different story. Um, I, I want to rewind a little bit. Let's go to Fremont High School, 1967. What's going on in Fremont High at that time? you guys to even form the avenues? Is there a gang scene uh, Okay, okay. What's the point of I got kicked out of three high schools. I went to Fremont, and I was going to, um, I had a failing grades in my um, health ed class. And so I had to make up for it by taking what, er, that early morning class. What they call it, you go to school at six o'clock in the morning. Um, you remember that? We didn't have that. Yeah, okay. <laughs> but in order to make up, you could go in at six. And so I'd go in early morning, and that was health education. We had summer school for that. And this guy, the teacher's name was Mr. Slee. And he was a white guy. And uh, he, one day we was making fun of him because he had s sleepy socks. The socks wouldn't hold up. You know, they were drunk socks. And, uh, and, and, Mr. Slee, are you colorblind? Because you got Mitch Mac socks on, you know. And I clowned him like that. Are you colorblind? Da, da, da. And he gave me an F. Hmm. Okay, and I'm like, I've been coming in this early morning, getting up early, five o'clock to get, walk to Fremont to get here at six. And rewind, you're on the football team, so you can't afford no Fs, right? Uh, yeah, well, uh, um, I was a uh, junior varsity. No, I couldn't afford no Fs. No. So that F got you off the team. Wait, wait, wait. No, no. I went to jail that day. When I got that F, <laughs> I, I, I walked up to him. I said, you going to fail me? I'm that paper. I said, you going to fail me, Mr. S uh, Sleepy Socks? Something like that. And he stood up and ran up at me and gave me that look. That look that they give us when they want to say nigger. <laughs> And he couldn't get it out of his mouth. He was fixing to. And I knocked that motherfucker out. And the girl said, Craig Munson, you're going to go to jail for that. <laughs> I screwed mate. I knocked him straight out. Was that your first knockout? Hell no. I was knocking him out all up in tish. I was not, look, wait, wait, wait. So I go on to my next class. <laughs> and they come to get me. 77 coming to. Munson, come here. Nigga, you crazy. You were supposed to run. What am I gonna run for? <laughs> I went to 77. And uh, uh, they, they gave me a uh, salt on a teacher and sent me to camp. I went to Camp Mendenhall. So from 77, you went to what? Uh, LP or East Lake? No, I went to East Lake and then LP. And they sent me to Camp Mendenhall. 
And when I got to Mendenhall, I'm 17, but I'm old for my age, and I'm on swole. And uh, so, Earl. So this is 1967. This is 1967. Wow, what's going on in camps? LA camp Fighting camp fires. Camp. Fighting fires. Uh, uh, matter of fact, I was on the, uh, they stopped the, uh, the, the senior camps from fighting fires. I fought, four, I fought 15 major fires, but then on that last one, the whole fire crew got killed. Um, the fire truck, the fire captain, they went up a, a ravine and we were taking a break with the, in the little camp in, encampment where all the trucks are, helicopters coming in. It's a major fire, San Gabriel Mountains. And uh, they say, you know, the, the fire truck got the speakers on and all, you eating, we eating, moving it down because we got to get back out there, got to rest and get back. And they say, help, help, help. We went up the old ridge route. I'm remembering this. I'm remembering it right now as I speak. That sound, that, that eerie sound in the man's voice. Help, help. We went up the old ridge route. The wind shifted. The, fly, the fire is engulfing us. We are up under the truck. They were up under the fire truck. That was it. Next thing I know, they bring them down in bags. That, and I, I said, hey, we ain't fighting no more fires. I stood up then. Remember, I'm a, I'm a leader. And so when I said we ain't fighting no more, everybody sat down, all the teenagers. We weren't going back out. They took us back to camp. I get in trouble. So when I get to camp, and then you got four segments. You got a segment here, and you got, we'll say these are alligators, these are the tigers, these are the, the chimpanzees, these are the gorillas, right? And they put me in the tigers. And I'm the biggest, Earl Cox was the biggest when I got there, big old brother. And when they, when I come, and I'm, and I, I peek Earl, but he's big and he's stupid. You know, big old dodo. And I'm like, oh shit. And I asked the counselor, why y'all put me in this fuck up group? They, and your bed gotta be made tight like soldiers. And, and they, all the beds all ragged and shit. They said, we want you to get it in order. I said, okay. So, wait a minute, wait a minute. I said, they go to the theater once a month, right? And what you got to do to go to the theater? You have to have your, your, you have to get high grades for the whole week, every week. Oh, shit, okay. Uh, uh, and I asked the question, what's the shortest time anybody ever done here? 15 weeks. 15 weeks. That, that's the shortest time? They said, yeah. I said, I'm going to beat that. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to get out of here. They said, okay, well, this and another. Anyhow. I snapped that tiger group in the order. We went to go see Cool Hand Luke. <laughs> we went to go see uh, uh, Paul Newman, Cool Hand Luke, at the theater because of me. And so all them cats that was in the group and the tigers, they owed me because I got them in the order. I did my own inspection. That bed ain't tight enough. And opened it in the cabinet. Man, straighten this shit up. And, you know? So, so race and gangs wasn't an issue in juvenile camps? No, uh-uh. In 1967? But, but you, uh-uh. And you got to remember, the big dude always was the big dog. Okay, you ever been to the county jail? They always want to make the big guy the cheer tender. Okay? The county jail. They always want to make the big guy uh, uh, the house mouse. You know? Because everybody going to follow that big guy. If you ain't got no knife or what, you got them guns. Okay? These are... I ain't never carry no gun. I had 22 inch arm, these were my guns, okay? I didn't have to carry no pistol. No, back in my time, back in my time, now I'm gonna give you some history here. At the stop signs, all through LA, they were white four by four posts. You old enough to remember that? Okay, see, they, the stop sign is on the steel pole now, right? But back in my time, they were four by four white posts. White posts with a stop sign on it. Well. The police would ever know when Craig Munson come through the neighborhood because I would break them in half. I'd walk up to the pole and bust it. And I'd, wherever I walk up and down the street, it was like Craig Munson come through here because one nothing but a splinter standing up and the, and the stop sign was on the ground. Am I, and the truth, that's true. People says, and on the west side, they say, Big Craig was over here on the west side because all these holes knocked down. They stopped making the wood. They mm -hmm. took, quit making wood and put, start putting up steel. That's true. Okay, that's true. And I had homeboys 
they would try to do the same, but they hurt their hand. <laughs> they couldn't do it. Okay, they get a run in the star. They run up and hit it. Bam! No, but I'd walk up to it, plant my feet, and hit that sucker. Wow! You're in camp in '67, so you yeah. come home in '67. Yeah. But there's no Avenue Gang at the time. Yeah, we are. We still there. We still here. So wait a minute. When you went to camp, you was already in Avenue. Yes. So we got to rewind. Let's, let's okay, when I came home, no, we got to figure out when you started the avenue. Uh, like sixteen. When when I sixty six. Sixty six. Up under the where I showed you, sitting up under there. And you're you're a Fremont High student at the time. At the time, yes, we are. We we are kids. We are sitting up under there. Um, Donny Boy had that old car sitting on in front, right there, and uh, Donny Boy wouldn't drink at that time. But, but me and the other boys, we drank in Panther Piss or. Or a uh, uh, um, uh, bitter dog, um, but the avenue—the only wrong thing we did—I, I used to take leather coats. <laughs> okay, I was a leather coat snatcher. Give me that coat, and uh, um, somebody in the group—it might be five or six of them—because the police would always run up on us, drive up on us. And say, hey, two men in a crowd. We walk into a party or somewhere, walk into Fremont Record Hop, walk in, break it up. Five on this side, we have to split it up. Five go across the street, five stay on this side, five walk in the front. You couldn't be a, a bundle of us walking. So the avenues are the original leather jack jackers. Yes. Yes. And, and not one time that I had a leather jacket in my closet that I had took from somebody. I had a blue one that was here that I bought on Los An uh, 7th and Los Angeles downtown and a, a brown suede uh, uh, like on uh, 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 Big Valley. Remember Keith Barkley always wore them short, short jackets? I always liked them short jackets. Why? Because when sh you got that short jacket on, you can swing them guns. But you got a long jacket on, you can't swing good. We were just a bunch of neighborhood boys who hung out with each other and, and uh, worked out. Uh, cricket, Gravy Carter didn't work out. Teddy Bear, Donny Boy, and myself, we worked out together. Wolfman worked out. William Yates worked out. Uh, Smoke Bomb would come work out. Big Ed Jones would come work out. All of us worked out in the garage or in this backyard. Uh, Raymond Burns, Johnny Boy. Johnny Boy was no avenue. Raymond Burns, he said he wasn't really an avenue, but his brother Pookie, he's in Tennessee right now. Tennessee or uh, Mississippi, one of them. He still call me right now today. Avenue, Avenue, that mother was 65 years old, 66, still Holland Avenue. When you get the book and send it to me, Avenue, brother, Avenue, brother, that's Pookie, okay, big Pookie. My mother, she would say, Craig, can you hear come Pookie? He start from down the street, Avenue, coming up. He would holler, Avenue. And I said, Pookie, will you cut that shit out, <laughs> you know? What does Avenue mean, though? Where'd you get it from? This on the sign, the street sign, Hooper Avenue. But look it up. You know what Avenue mean? The meaning of Avenue? It's like passage. It's a passage in the dic dic dictionary. It's a passage. And the Avenue was our passage. What was going on with you guys when you guys wanted to stamp a name for your group? Were you guys influenced by other gangs in the area? Were you guys having issues with other gangs in the area? And you guys had to. Well, you would right? see. Okay, in the 60s, um, the Slauson had died out. The Black Panthers had emerged. The Black Panthers, us. So gangs was, gangs itself were filtering out. The avenues wasn't really like a gang gang. We were neighborhood boys. We played football on Sunday. Yeah, we snatched jackets, but, uh, uh, um, and we, people would challenge us here and there. But we fought, we fight them, and they they know that. They, I remember we went to a uh, um, skating ring in Hollywood, and um, uh, they picked on the smallest guy in the avenue, and that was Voodoo Vic. Voodoo Vic was so sharp, he walked so clean, and he got it from the essays. The essays, Latinos, they always had a soulful strut, and they would always put their shirt neatly over their arm, and they would strut. Well, Voodoo Vic was like that. He would do that, and at the uh, at this. Um, Hollywood skating ring, the guys um, was in front of insulting him or what, and um, we was like, man, fuck this, let's get out of here because we were outnumbered. So we go out in front of the skating ring 
my homeboy, God bless his soul, Eddie Miles was out there. Big Craig, Eddie Miles lived around the corner here. He said, Big Craig, I got your back, I got your back. You know, he was, I got you, I'm with you. And because it was a bunch of them, I don't even know who they was from. And um, uh, words were exchanged, and they tried to, they tried to get voodoo. More words were exchanged, and then the guy who was trying to get him, I stepped in, leave it there alone, and he, I don't like to argue, and he said one or two good words to me, and I knocked him out, bam! Okay, knocked him out. Eddie Miles knocked somebody out. I don't know who, but there was two bodies on the ground. Okay, and now we're in Hollywood, it's time to leave. So we jump in that 39 Chevy, we coming down Western, trying to get back to the neighborhood. Next thing I know, a 57 Buick pull us over, and another car, they block us in. Okay, they block us in. And when we jump out the car, who do they attack? Voodoo Vic. They run up on him and start wailing on him. And I, I'm getting, I'm out the car, the next thing I know, I'm standing between the, I'm at the 39 Chevy. I'm standing on the street, and when I get out, the guy hit me in the head with the bumper jack. That's that big old long jack that used to jack the car up. And he hit me in the head. Ah! Knocked me down. I don't go unconscious. Donnie Boy grabbing from the back. Donnie Boy's driving. He running around grabbing, throwing through one window, burglar alarm go off. Ding -a -ding -a -ding -a -ding -a -ding. Then he, meanwhile, he's hollering, Mons, wake up, wake up, because I'm dazed. Boy hit me in the head with the jack. Then Donnie took take him out that window and throw him in this window. Ding -a -ling -a -ling -a -ling -a -ling. Break alarm's going off. By that time I come through. I come to. Okay? Oh, this history. Did, did you ever <laughs> find out who these guys were? Uh, well, I took that jack and I broke all the windows out in that fifty six Buick and uh uh did handle my business. Uh and then I, I went to Fremont. I was still going to Fremont. I hanging out at Fremont or something. And I could see that beard riding around with no windows. <laughs> yes, I'd see that beard. I'm like, damn, that's that car. You know? Yes, yes. Did, did the avenues have official local rivals? No. Who, who did no, you guys no, fight no, in no, the area? No. Who did no. you guys fight, period? Was no. there a rival no, to the avenues? No, no, no. I've been asked that question several times. Did you guys write on walls like Mark? Oh, Carter? I was going to tell you that. I was going to say, remember, I sit on the wall out front. And I did not never catch nobody writing on the wall. That was unacceptable. Unacceptable. Excuse my French, my language. That was unacceptable in my neighborhood. No graffiti on the walls. And do not. Buzzard took my next door neighbors out. He was a mailman, lived right there. He had a, a MG with the MG sports car with the rag top, little sports car, two-seater. And Buzzard cut the hole in the top and took his cassette. I was so mad at Buzzard for taking my neighbors. We don't do that in this neighborhood. When, when you say your neighborhood, describe the area which was your, considered your neighborhood. Uh, uh, from, Fire, from Firestone to Florence, okay? So east uh, to west. Uh, uh, that's, uh, Florence is that way, and back there, uh, uh, Firestone, and, and then from Central Avenue, Central Avenue to Compton. But we had uh, uh, Avenue, Smoke Bomb living on 87th in Central over there, Hugh Avenue. Uh, Timmy, uh, Timmy, a uh, red freckled Timmy, red hair, and his brother uh, Tremaine, they lived across Central. They were the Avenues. Uh, Tremaine, God bless him, he got shot. In, let me see. Charles Wright, Shitty Freddy, took a bullet for him, put Charles Wright in a wheelchair. I just find out, because since we got social media, uh, Whatever happened to Timmy? Because I got attacked one night at a party, and the guy who attacked me had two hatchets. And he was coming at me with two hatchets. And uh, his buddy was coming too, so I, I cold cut the buddy, and then the other guy, Timmy, said, Nick Miles, watch out. And I ducked, and the guy put the hatchets in the trunk of the car, because I fell back on the trunk, and they went, now you know, they stuck in the car. And as he was trying to pull it out, Timmy cold cocked him from the side. Bam! He just died from cancer. Was, was there a, a Florence 13 presence in this neighborhood? No. There was no Mexican gangs in this area? They were over there. They weren't over here? No. And look, remember I told you about Frank Martinez stealing his bird, I mean, taking me birds. And then there was another guy, little Ray, Ray Henrique. 
he had birds too over there by Rotherville Park. That's Florence. Like, that's Florence. And uh, I was stealing his birds, me and Teddy Bear. We cut a, a hole in his garage and went down because the birds were in the garage. The whole garage was the pigeon coop. We went over there about 2 o'clock in the morning, cut the hole in and went down and stole birds. Okay? Uh, but in the daytime, I'd go over there and eat tacos and burritos with him and his mother, grandmother. Okay? And then we still in his birds. When I get to Tracy, he's in Tracy. Okay? My little Mexican buddy. That's what got me a free ride to San Quentin. Don't tell me he was from F-13 when he, when he got no, free. No, but uh, he ended up being... The big guys? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, so now, because we're limited on time. I want, I want to tap into your relationship with Raymond Washington. I didn't have a re relationship. Look, 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 let me say this. Raymond used to come to the gym a couple of times that I remember, and he would always cause chaos. Raymond didn't work out. Uh, uh, Boo worked out. Boo had the biggest back arms that I had ever seen. Boo's Donnie Boy's That's the baby brother. brother. Okay. He had, and I talked to him yesterday for two hours on the phone. He had the biggest back arm. He's a, a minister now. He got some kind of podcast. He wanted me to check it out. Anyhow, we talked yesterday. Um, uh, and we talked about Raymond. And he, I said, Ray, I, Boo, I don't ever remember seeing Raymond Washington again after the day that I slapped him. I never saw him again. He said, Munson, he used to come with me, but after that day, no, he didn't come around no more. Well, did he come around much up until that point? He said, yeah, he would come around, but he would always be talking too much shit, and you didn't like it, okay? Rewind. Why, why did you slap Raymond Washington? Because he was playing the dozen. Your mama got big feet. Your mama this and your mama that. Now, Raymond, you better leave my mama out your mouth like that. You understand? So you, you knew Raymond. In the gym, but, but okay. I'm, I was like two and a half years older than Raymond. So if I'm if I'm 18 then, what Raymond, 16? He was actually three years older. He's born in 53, you're born in 50. Okay, but so you see what I'm saying? So, and they say, oh, we had a fight. We didn't have no fight. I was too old to fight him. And and I, we, I'm we working out with Donnie Boy and all, and I said, Donnie, oh, I'm gonna hit that motherfucker after he finished. He said, Munson, you better hit him with an open hand. Cause he's a kid, you understand? So. After we put the lock on the on the garage, we locking it up and we standing out. Come here, Raymond. Like that. He was, what? What? I said, I don't want you coming over here no more, you little motherfucker. And I slapped him. I backhand him like that. And what did Raymond do? He almost went down. I didn't hit him hard enough to knock him down because he's a kid. But he was a bad kid. I hit, he almost went down. And he come back up and he didn't cry. He started snibbling. And he Raymond had a limp. He walked with a limp up and down, up and down like that. And he said to me, I don't want to be in the avenues no how. I'm going to go and I'll start my own game. And I said, what you going to call it, you little crip? I said that because of him walking up and down. He was Because he had a bad limp. And he said to me, that's what I'm going to call it, the Crips. And he limped down the alley just like that. And that was the last time I saw him. So what year did you end up going to prison? I got arrested when I was 20 years old. So that was 70. I was, that was 1970. I got arrested at the end of 70. I turned 21 in the county jail when I was fighting my murder case. And how long were you in the penitentiary for? Yeah, almost five. Almost. Because I came home in 75. So when you come home, while you're in the pen during 70 and 75, are you hearing about your neighborhood evolving and changing? Are you are you getting letters and visits telling you? Yeah, hey, yes. There's something going on. My mother came and told me Buzz's brother was dead. Okay? Uh, uh, Baycox come. Baycox come and me and, me and Baycox on the yard. I didn't know Baycox, but he had got busty with my homie. They wanted to call me. William, the big Eric. You know that palladium thing. Okay, uh, you know uh, Baycox, y'all know Baycox. Uh, and we, we was on, Quint, on San Quentin's yard together. I got pictures with me and Baycox together, okay? And we sat and talked many days on the lower yard about what they was doing, okay? 
Real quick, Marcin, where's the garage that you guys used to work? It's out on Eighty Fifth. Okay, it's, it's down the way. And, nah. and so that alley would be over there on Eighty Fifth. Yes, yes. Okay. Uh huh. When's the first time you heard that your neighborhood turned into a crip territory? When's the first time you even heard the word crip? Sitting reminiscent